Hello everyone. In this short video, I want to show you an interesting block and application in Simulink about real-time simulations. So let's say here we have a ball dropping from some height, okay, under gravity and some air drag. So here the air drag is uh, proportional to velocity squared. And here you see the drag force, which is basically uh, half of a coefficient of drag times density of the air times the cross section divided by mass of the ball and all of those values are calculated in this uh, game block here okay so here we have a ball a sphere a spherical uh, it's moving in the air it's made of steel the radius is five centimeters and so on and that's g and uh we want to see how long it takes it to drop from a height of uh, 40 meters uh, starting from rest to the ground and when it hits the ground we're going to stop the simulation okay so if i click on this scope block and run look what happens done so you see it takes a little bit less than three seconds 2.89 seconds for it to drop but if you look at how much time it took for this simulation to happen, it was only a fraction of a second. Look again. Done. You see? In uh, way less than a second, it shows everything, while in physical world, it should take it about three seconds to drop. So this is not a real-time simulation. Now, if you want, you can go to library and search for this block called a real-time sync or synchronization. And if you bring it, that's this block here. And you don't need to connect it anywhere. You can just have it uh, in there unless you want to go in and change the sample time of it. Okay, so it's the number of basically uh, times this block per second uh, checks or the number, uh, the time, uh, the sample time, it, it takes it to check whether the time of the simulation and the CPU time are the same or not. And if they are not, it counts it as what we call a missed tick, and it can show it. So here it can say how many times the time of the simulation and the time of CPU could not be in sync. A hundred, right? A thousand. So you can give it a limit. And if you want, you can even see that, okay? You can see that and display it on somewhere, right? So you can even have it and show it on the scope block. Or let's say I don't want it, and that's all I want. And when you put that in, and now let's, let's do the simulation again. Look what happens here. Look. You see? It took it about that three seconds to happen instead of boom in like a fraction of a second. Again, look. You see how beautiful it is doing it? So in order to use this block, it's not just enough to bring the block. You also have to have the real-time kernel installed in MATLAB. So for that, you can go to MATLAB and use this command, sldrt kernel, okay? So uh, this is for a real-time and real-time kernel, and you have to install it. When you install it, then you can bring this block and it works. Again, if you don't, this guy is not going to work. And as I said, if you want, you can see the uh, number of times that it, the time of the simulation and the, simul and the CPU didn't match. So uh, you can see that, right? So here I can add it to my scope block and I can see it also side by side to my simulation result. So let me show you that here. So you can bring it here and add it. And uh, again, if we do it, look. You see, so at most 10 times it was in the probably first, um, it went one time to 10 and then uh, reduced. So it never went to the maximum of 100, okay? And so, uh, yes, the time of the simulation is not going to be perfectly 100% matching the CPU time, but it is as, as slow as the CPU time, even if the ticks are not perfectly matching. 
okay and uh, clearly this is working here okay so uh, hopefully this video was useful to you and you learn uh, something interesting this real-time sync and how to make it look more like uh, more like real-time and I'll see you in my next video thank you